Steve Dill. Hi, I'm Newt Gingrich. I think it is totally appropriate that we're having this particular debate on 912. And in the spirit of 912, I hope to work with you to fundamentally, profoundly change Washington in what will be a long and difficult struggle against the forces of reaction and special interest. That's former House Speaker Newt Gingrich last night in Tampa. The big uh, Tea Party debate on our Newsmakers line with us uh, today and uh, newt a longtime friend as uh, as he knows i'm a huge fan and uh, man we've been we've been friends for a long time and uh, and always good to have you back with us uh, by the way coming up in just a little while we're going to be talking with uh, henry juskowitz who is the ceo of gibson they've been under fire from the obama administration uh, more concerned about apparently the allegedly illegal wood at uh, at gibson than the millions of illegal aliens in america uh the uh, CEO of Gibson is going to join us uh, in just a little while. And, and Newt, this, this is a, another indica- indicator of, of what the Obama administration is doing. They, they are targeting the rich generally. They're targeting the successful, the, the people who make America work generally. Now they're even targeting them specifically. Well, listen, I, I think that uh, it is amazing. Uh, we're, we're putting together for my newsletter, which comes out every week, um, a, a multiple-choice question which says, you had 26 armed federal agents, would you, A, help them control the border, B, go after drug dealers, C, go after terrorists, or D, uh, track down an American guitar company over endangered wood, and you only get to go to work for the Obama administration if you pick D? Well, and even worse, it's it's not just do you go go after the drug cartel leaders, do you give them guns and then not go after them? So it's even worse exactly than, right. than what you that's, laid that's out. That's exactly <laughs> right. It's just, uh, the Fast and Furious thing. I, I think Gibson Guitar is actually eventually going to pass Fast and Furious as a major example of what's wrong with the Obama administration. Because it is, first of all, I'm, I'm told that he has a letter in which um, somebody in the administration has suggested to him that if only he were manufacturing overseas, he wouldn't have this problem. Now, if that's true, that letter is so utterly irrational, given the president's speech the other night and 9.1% unemployment, that it, it really gives you a sense of how destructive the bureaucrats are under Obama. But in addition, the very spectacle, the, the idea that you'd have armed agents at a guitar factory over wood, is a government that has lost its mind. And uh, what I'm trying to do is get the House and Senate to hold hearings, produce every single decision document, produce the, the, the schedule of every single meeting, figure out who made these decisions, and get them fired. Uh, there's no reason that we should tolerate bureaucrats who come into a totally peaceful environment, close it down, force the workers to go home, tell the tourists it's closed, um, this was a profoundly destructive act that if they can do it to Gibson Guitar, they can do it to anybody else. So I, I think it's a, this is a very, this may become one of the most important symbolic events in the history of the Obama administration. I don't think it's any great irony that you've got them, you know, saying, hey, if you'll, if you'll put your jobs overseas, we'll be happy with you. Uh, they're buying buses from Canada. Their uh, labor secretary is buying cars from Canada. We were joking last week, Newt, that the, the president ought to be playing uh, O Canada when he walks into the room instead of hail to the chief. Apparently that's the only place he's willing to create jobs. Talk a little bit about well, this. Uh, uh, go ahead. By the way, he did the same thing in Brazil where he told the Brazilians how proud he was that they were – uh, developing offshore and said that uh, he wants America to be their best customer. And I've told people, you don't hire a president of the United States to go around the world purchasing <laughs> from foreigners. You, you, he's supposed to be an American salesman, not a foreign purchasing agent. Maybe that's where they're getting all that job creation uh, figure that uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is talking about. They're just counting foreign jobs rather than American jobs. Talk about the debate last night. I, I thought, uh, obviously, the media is still trying to frame it as a Romney-Perry race, and to a large extent, that's what it was. But you were in the thick of things again last night. You were at the Reagan Library debate last week. Again, it, it looks to me, for most of the news accounts today, you're right in the thick of it again. Well, I, we, we released yesterday, uh, Joe DeSantis, who is our director of communications, pointed out that if you went back to September of 1975, Jimmy Carter did not exist as a candidate. In September of 1971, George McGovern didn't exist as a candidate. In uh, 1991, Bill Clinton was at 3%. Uh, in, 19, in 2007, um, McCain was not in the top two. 
for the, the media is not going to succeed in artificially creating a two-person race. Uh, Governor Perry and Governor Romney have the most money, but they don't have the most ideas. And in a time of massive unemployment with crises building in the Middle East, uh, I think the American people are going to want to see somebody who actually knows how to solve the problems. And I think having a track record of having balanced the budget for four years, having reformed welfare, having uh, cut taxes, particularly the capital gains tax, to bring us down to 4.2% unemployment, I think those are going to be... Uh, really uh, good answers to the money and the consultants of the Romney and Perry campaigns. And as I pointed out last night, ironically, in the four years that I was Speaker, the American people created more jobs in Texas than Governor Perry did in 11 years. They created more jobs in Utah than, Go- than the Governor Huntsman did, and they created more jobs in Massachusetts than Governor Romney did. So when we get into this, this sort of uh, comparing notes game of who did the best job, uh, the, the objective fact is that working with President Clinton, we passed welfare reform, we passed tax cuts, we, we really reduced regulation, we encouraged job creation, and it worked. Many of the folks who were in, in that poll second tier, the Huntsmans, the Bachmans, Kane, and, and, and the others, yourself included, are, are really like attacking Perry and Romney as a way to kind of get back in. You really have adopted a different strategy. I mean, you're standing there as the adult, spewing ideas rather than attacks, Obviously, that's that's a strategy that's different than the ones the others are following. Well, part of it is I'm following um, the, the strategy that Reagan used in 18... I mean, that uh, Lincoln used in 1860 when Lincoln saw everybody as a team of rivals and said, you know, in order for us to be successful, we're going to all have to work together. Uh, my number one goal here is to defeat Obama and to replace uh, the uh, the secular welfare state mentality of Washington to do that, we've got to have a team come out of this this process. And so I'm, I'm focused on being positive about solutions, and I'm focused on finding a way for us as a team to offer the American people a better future. And I think um, I want to let other folks, if, if they feel their best future is attacking each other, that's their prerogative. I don't think that's right. I think the American people are sick of negative attack politics, and I think they're looking for a leader who's prepared to focus on the country rather than on personal ambition. One of the things that uh, that you talked about last night was the fear card that the the Obama team is playing generally that that the candidates are playing against each other of you know trying to scare elders when it comes to social security. You're playing a different route that way as well. Well, that's right. I, I think uh, first of all, let's, let's reassure everybody who's over 50 that we're not going to change the system involuntarily. They they have the option of change if they want it. It's entirely up to them, but they are safe uh, they're protected. They're going to get the current deal because you can't start switching wildly on, on retirement agreements when people are close to retirement. But then let's also be honest with people who are 20 years old and tell them that they don't want to live their lives with people like Barack Obama threatening not to pay them as he did in July. You know, twice in July, he said, I may not be able to pay the August checks. Well, why should a politician have that level of control over your retirement if you spent your whole life working on it. And so I think creating a personal Social Security savings account, allowing them to put the tax money into an account they control rather than the politicians, would be an enormous step forward. And then you don't have to worry about lengthening the, the, the amount of time people work. People can work as long as they want to. It's their retirement. It's their savings. It's their money. Um, there are 1,200,000 people over 75 years of age who are working because they want to. Uh, there are lots of other people who'd like to retire at 55. I think if you work hard all your life, you put up your savings, you control your savings, you decide your lifestyle. Who or why should politicians define for you uh, the age of, and frankly, you might want to retire for a little while and then come back. So uh, I think we're going to have a much more flexible, much healthier, and much more active old age than we've ever had before. And, and people in the 20s and 30s ought to be given freedom. They shouldn't be given government bureaucratic control. We'll, uh, we're going to want to talk with you a lot in the weeks and months ahead as we roll ahead in this presidential campaign. If folks want to get involved, if they want to get uh, get on the team, Newt, how do they get involved with you? The best way is to go to newt.org, just my first name.org. We'd love to have them there. Uh, and I look forward very much to maybe coming to uh, Nashville and doing a large town hall meeting. Maybe uh, we, we, if you would, see with you as the moderator, and, and uh, we could really build a fascinating town hall meeting and have, let people come out and talk about what they care about. I will be happy to do it. Go ahead and put me down on the list. I will be happy to moderate that. We'll look forward to uh, to getting that done and, and getting you here in Music City. And uh, we might be able to get uh, the CEO of Gibson, Henry Juskowitz, to, to come over and maybe uh, 
Bring well, you a new, a new we'll oriented have guitar. Some Gibson guitars together. We'll have some Gibson guitars at a Freedom concert, okay? I like that. We've got some guys All who right. can play some music here. We'll talk All with right. you again soon, Thanks. my friend. You keep up the great work.